It was crazy that on Thursday I did a break on the air talking about first responders, police officers, uh, medics, paramedics, EMTs, firefighters, the people who are waiting for us to find trouble. And when we get ourselves into trouble, like I ended up doing on Thursday night, they come rushing to save us. So I was basically just talking about how lucky we are to have first responders on Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon, I left Fort Collins, headed for Steamboat to meet my sister, who'd flown in from Pennsylvania along with her three kids and husband. So I got going a little bit late. They don't plow the road, um, you know, way up west after 7 p.m. until 5 a.m. So I was really the only one up there. It was dumping snow. And after I passed Mishawaka and anywhere that even resembles cell coverage, I started getting sick. And, you know, I don't want to gross you out too much, but I was throwing up. And I had to stop and puke every 10 miles. And it turned into about a two and a half hour trip. What it take? What it should have taken forty five minutes, ended up taking about two and a half hours, through a couple inches of snow, very low visibility, extremely dark, no reception with anybody. There was a car that stopped and asked me if I was okay when I was pulled over, taking care of my business. And I mean, there wasn't a ton that they could do for me because I needed to push through to get to some kind of coverage to call my wife, to call my sister, to let them know that. I was indeed alive, but wasn't sure that I was going to make it all the way to Steamboat. By the time I got to the KOA in Gould, Colorado, which is just about 25 miles short of Walden, which is the only civilization if you start heading west on 14 from Fort Collins, I just couldn't go any further. So I had some cell phone reception. I called my wife. I called my sister. I told them I didn't think I was going to make it to Steamboat that night. And just wondered if I should call an ambulance and I had been you know throwing up for the last two and a half hours I was obviously very dehydrated and I had never called 911 for myself before but I figured this was the time to call 911 so I did um, talked to the dispatcher told him where I was even though it's out in the middle of nowhere the people who were up around that area tend to know the area pretty well so they were able to pinpoint just where I was and I cannot tell you the amazing feeling that it was to see those flashing lights come from a distance. You know, I'm sort of out in the middle of the woods because I was just sitting there parked and I could see it flashing off of the trees from far away. And then the Jackson County Sheriff comes and he shows up. And I knew that if I was in huge trouble right there, he'd be able to save my life. I mean, those guys are extremely well trained, but he told me to just hang on for the paramedics. Um, you know, I did the break on Thursday morning on the air just saying, hey, we should be extremely thankful for our first responders. And it was amazing that I got to experience just how thankful I have to be um, for them to show up. Because if I wasn't able to get to cell phone reception, if I wasn't able to call somebody to come and rescue me at that point, it could have turned out really, really badly. So I just wanted to make this video and to say thank you to all the first responders for what you do, for the intense training that you go through, for the sacrifices that you make, and for the job that you decide to do, which I believe is more of a calling than a job. And uh, you're amazing. We love you, and we're so thankful to have you in our American society and throughout the world. All the first responders, we, uh, we really appreciate you. Thank you. No, really. Thank you.